एवरी वन आई एम वुमन ग्रैंड मास्टर निशा मोहता आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल एंड टूडे आई एम स्टार्टिंग ए न्यू सीरीज मसाला चाय एंड चेस विथ निशा सो द कॉन्सेप्ट इज दिस दैट वी ऑल लाइक टी इन इंडिया एंड वॉट बेटर देन मसाला चाय सो आई वुड लाइक ऑल ऑफ यू टू हैव अ कप ऑफ टी चिलैक्स एंड वॉच अ ब्यूटिफुल गेम विथ मी वाइल यू हैव अ सिप so when you watch my video don't forget your cup okay so what are we going to see today i have a beautiful game to show to you my you know one of my real favorites i have seen it a multiple times and i don't get tired of seeing it again and again so this is a game of grandmaster sandeepan chanda a player who needs no introduction like he he's a very imaginative player very creative player he has been the second of vishwanathan anand it's you know always nice to discuss chess with him to you know find out about his perspective on chess to analyze with him and i must say that i have been lucky to know him for many years so without further delay let's start the game sandeepan chanda versus himanshu sharma it was played in the year 2006 one thing i would like to say is that both the players are very famous in the indian circuit especially even himanshu sharma at that time in the year 2006 was already a very very strong player in fact in 2006 he became an international master and in 2017 he went on to become a grandmaster he is a very original player very uh, self made player so it's very nice to see such an encounter of two great players so sandeepan is white he started with e4 himanshu played c5 this is cilian defense let's see which line it leads to knight f3 knight c6 bishop b5 so we see the rosalie move on the board g6 was played here and sandeepan went for castles we also know that there is another move uh, bishop c6 is also played here but sandeepan chose castles which is the other uh, main line bishop g7 was played h3 uh, the idea of h3 is i guess in future we don't allow bishop g4 so knight f6 e5 knight d5 was played sandeepan played rook e1 all this was known to theory and uh, i guess both the players knew what they were doing here the common move is castles for black this is what everyone used to play but in this game himanshu who is the you know having the black pieces in this game played queen c7 now this was a new move for sandeepan and so now an original game begins knight c3 was played here knight into c3 d into c3 at this point himanshu went for a pawn hunt he was getting this e5 pawn and he thought okay why not grab it but i think this was a dangerous decision especially considering the fact that the white player was sandeepan sandeepan is known to be very creative very imaginative and it's very dangerous to keep your king in the center of the board against sandeepan so anyways let's see what happened in the game black took knight into e5 white took the knight bishop into e5 and here white played queen d5 he's attacking the e5 bishop and asking him a question where do you go now surprisingly in this position the right move for black would be f6 it's a very ugly looking move i completely understand and uh, I'm not sure I would have played f6 had I been black. I mean, who plays a move f6 when there's a queen on d5, I'm the diagonal a to g8, and with the king being in the center of the board, nobody wants to play this move f6, right? So I wouldn't, uh, you know, think that f6 was a very obvious decision, but it was a hard decision black had to make here. But uh, Himanshu played. Uh, bishop d6 and uh, i think he thought it was important to defend the e7 pawn and i guess he had the idea to play a6 kick the bishop on b5 and 
uh, then go rook b8, play b5, maybe even trap the bishop with c4, put bishop on b7, and maybe move away the king with king d8, king c8 if need be. So bishop d6 was played here, and in this position, Sandeepan saw two good moves, bishop g5 and bishop h6. And he was tempted by one of it, I mean one of the moves because that was leading to a very interesting idea which he saw. So here he played bishop h6. Bishop g5 is also a very nice move here. But bishop h6, I would say, is the start of a very beautiful, very creative idea. So if you want to just chill out and watch this game, that's fine. But if you want to think, you can start thinking right from here. There are, you know, fireworks starting very soon. So maybe you can think what's exactly happening. You can pause the video if you want to think about what could happen in future because Sandeepan had already foreseen a very interesting idea. So let's have a look at how the game continued. A6 was played here. If you look at this, the bishop on b5 is a monster here. It's, it's really a monster because it's not allowing the d7 pawn to move. This, the control of this diagonal, a4 to e8, is very important because it is just disrupting the movement of black's pieces. So, bishop a4 was played here and black played rook b8. Uh, we see that in this position, black wants to play b5, but b5 wouldn't be possible because the a8 rook is hanging. So, Black played rook b8 and now he wants to play b5, trap the bishop on a4 maybe and you know like b5, bishop b3, c4. Uh, also another idea of black could be to play b5, bishop b7, kick the queen, maybe play queen c6 if need be, go king d8 and play from there. And this is a position where you really need to pause if you need to you know, if you have the urge to find a good move here, it's a beautiful position. It's the next move is really mind blowing. In this position, Sandeepan played rook into e7. Wow, simply brilliant. He just picks up a rook and just grabs a pawn on e7, just gives a rook for free. Brilliant, brilliant. So bishop into e7 was played, black must capture. And now Sandeepan simply brings his other rook to e1. If you look at this position, white is a full rook down. But black has the king on e8, the bishop on e7, and both of them are crying, help, help. And there's no piece of black which can actually help either of the pieces. So very interesting position that black has pieces on the board, but black is not able to help his other pieces. So for example, if black plays queen d8 here, trying to help the bishop on e7, a very simple move would be queen e5, and it attacks the h8 rook, the b8 rook, there could be more pressure with queen f6, bishop g5, etc. There's a lot of problem with the bishop on e7, the king on e8. So, in this position, black thought, let's move the king away to d8. And he moved his king. And now, another excellent move. Rook to e7. You know, if you look at it, you will think that this one rook sack was not enough and so Sandeepan made two. Two killer rook e7 moves and here the game is almost finished. It's very clear that white has an excellent position here. We don't really need to count material. It's the king which is important and here the king is completely busted. 
if you look at it what sandipan did is he just removed the dark squared defenders of black so he just first captured the e7 pawn then he captured the bishop on e7 and now this bishop on h6 is a complete monster there is no parallel to this bishop on h6 king into e7 was played here and white played queen e4 check this king is in real trouble here if the king goes to d6 there is a mate on mate with bishop f4 here uh, maybe we can move and see so in this position black played king f6 let's go back and see what happens to the other possibilities so king d6 bishop f4 is a checkmate as we can see instead if king d8 bishop g5 leads to mate next move so in the game black played king f6 sandeep on played g4 and he wants to give a checkmate with a pawn with g5 black played g5 in case instead of g5 if black decides to play queen e5 here white can go bishop g7 king g7 queen e5 with a check and an attack to the b8 rook so you see that the rook b8 move was also not very precise but uh, on the other hand if you look at it now you feel you know it's difficult to find a move for black in that position you know maybe rook a7 with the idea to play b5 could be considered now when we think of it uh, it is it could have been a possibility but uh, yeah this rook on b8 comes under problem in many variations so this would have been a nice variation black instead played g5 and uh, he avoids the mate white was threatening white played queen f5 check king e7 bishop g5 check king f8 and here bishop h6 check and black resigned we can have a look at uh, what was possible this this mate with every move for example king g8 queen g5 is a mate if instead king e7 then queen e4 and wherever the king moves for example if king d6 bishop f4 is a mate or instead if king f6 uh, there's a mate with a pawn uh, for king d8 here there is bishop g5 and mate next move so this was the final position of a brilliant game a game which is really worth seeing a hundred times you never get bored of such games you know imagine uh, by seeing this game we feel so nice how good sandeepan must have felt playing this game executing this idea rookie seven and more importantly discovering the idea rookie seven it's really a great move a great idea and it really needs a lot of imagination from a player to come up with two consecutive rookie seven ideas so yeah i hope uh, you all got as much pleasure in seeing this game as i found in showing it to all of you i've shown this game to a lot of people a lot of my friends as i really like to see it again and again i never get bored of this game okay friends this that's all for today in the comment section below let me know what do you think of this game did you enjoy it and if you want to see more such miniatures do let me know uh i will look for more beautiful games especially the lesser known ones to make our day a beautiful one thank you see you all soon